All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with today's presentation. My name is Kelsey Gibson. I'm going to be the host of today's session. If you experience any technical uh, issues with your video or audio, please feel free to reach out to me and I will handle those for you. Uh, you can reach me in the chat panel of your GoToWebinar interface or via email at kelseyg at labkey.com. A couple of housekeeping things before I turn it over to our presenters today. Everyone uh, by default is set to be muted as part of the presentation. We are going to do a question and answer session at the end. So if you have questions that you encounter during today's pre presentation, go ahead and put those in the question panel in the GoToWebinar interface, and then we'll go through those and answer all of those at the end. Today our presenters are Josh Eccles, our VP of Engineering here at LabKey, and Vigisha Sharma, a software developer for the McCoss Lab. They're going to share um, more about Panorama and a little bit of background information for you. So at this point, I'm going to pass it over to Josh. Thank you, Kelsey. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Excited to have a chance to check in on Panorama. I know that for some of you, you've uh, been following Panorama and using it for a while. Uh, but really what we decided in setting up this session is that there are a lot of people who are uh, new to Panorama, who maybe don't know too much about it or have heard something but not actually tried to be hands-on with it. Um, and we're excited to kind of uh, go back to basics with this, uh, this webinar. We've done a number of previous webinars. Uh, I think this is our fifth in, uh, in total at this point. Um, so we're going to start with the assumption that you are not all that familiar with Panorama already. Uh, for those who are more familiar, uh, there'll be plenty of updates as we go, highlighting new features that have been added uh, in the last year or so. Uh, so hopefully there's something for, for everyone. So starting out at, at ground zero, uh, where, uh, where Panorama came from is uh, as groups were accumulating more and more uh, data in Skyline, and I'll, I'll make the assumption here that most folks on the call are familiar and, and probably Skyline users already. Uh, they wanted to be able to organize and share that data and be able to mine it uh, more effectively. Uh, and so that's when we at LabKey and our collaborators at the McCoss Lab in the University of Washington uh, decided to launch Panorama, which is a, a web-based complement to Skyline. Um, and you can really think about it as a, a data repository for mass spec, uh, targeted mass spec data in particular. Um, and we'll go into all the various things that entails. Uh, so we've been at this for uh, just over five years now. Uh, our initial release was back in uh, 2012. Um, so we've had a lot of opportunity to, to iterate and refine and enhance. Uh, Panorama can be installed in-house, so on a server within your own organization, um, or it can also be hosted uh, in a, a cloud-based setup. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about that later in Vigisha in particular. We'll do some demos on uh, an installation that the McCoss Lab hosts uh, and is available uh, for the general public to use. Um, and just as a reminder, we do have that, that full series of Panorama webinars uh, available already. Those are all listed on uh, Panorama Web, a uh, server that Vikisha will be uh, exploring a little bit later in today's session. Uh, so real quick, uh, you know, kind of uh, technology background on, on Panorama. So uh, Panorama is a, a module in a more general data management platform called LabP Server. Uh, it is used by a variety of different groups for uh, multiple asset types, so not just mass spec data. Um, and it has a variety of collaboration tools. Um, and so it can be a great way to, uh, to kind of add and extend some of the context around all of your targeted mass spec data as well. Um, we won't go into those features in particular today, uh, but just like to be aware of that there are uh, you know, kind of general file sharing and, and wikis, um, message boards, things like that. So uh, it's not just the Skyline documents themselves, it's kind of the, the full context um, and metadata around them that could be collaborated on as well. So how does Panorama fit in with, with Skyline? Um, so really uh, what we're looking to do is uh, enable kind of an iterative cycle of, uh, of analysis and uh, data management and then data exploration. Uh, so the, uh, the, the orange icon in the lower left uh, of this figure represents uh, mass spec, of course, uh, producing 
uh, raw files in any one of the, the various vendor formats. Uh, and then, of course, Skyline uh, can ingest those directly, analyze them. Um, and then after uh, that Skyline analysis is complete, um, or when it's just at a good checkpoint, uh, we can go ahead and push that data into Panorama. Uh, that's just an option that's available within Skyline itself to the user interface, so it's very easy to point it um, at a location in Panorama and say, please transfer this file up there. Uh, you can then interact with it through the Panorama web interface. Uh, you can do things like search for a given uh, peptide, so across all of your Skyline documents uh, that you've ever tracked. Um, go ahead and, and find that and pull that up very quickly. Um, you can do querying uh, across all of your documents as well. Uh, you can do various plots, data aggregation, sharing with other groups. Um, and then one of the most important things is to be able to push that back into Skyline after the fact. Um, and so you can either download the original Skyline document itself from Panorama, because while we've imported all of that content into the Panorama database, we still retain the original file and can uh, easily download that back to Skyline. But we can also uh, create other uh, kind of content and push that back to, uh, to Skyline. So chromatogram libraries, for example, kind of the, uh, the analog uh, in the uh, MS1 world uh, to a spectral library in the MS2 world. It's something that we can generate within Panorama and push back to Skyline to inform future experiments. Um, and then you'll see there's also kind of this, this shortcut um, in the upper left uh, section of the diagram uh, for AutoQC. And so what we're doing is uh, making it possible to automatically pull data uh, directly into Panorama without ever having to interact with it manually in Skyline. Um, and so we'll talk about those workflows uh, in more detail but uh, trying to make it as easy as possible um, and for the routine things like QC or system suitability to not have to have a human involved uh, to just have that data automatically flow uh, all the way into Panorama effectively directly from the mass spec itself. So within Panorama, there are a number of uh, what we call folder types, but, but really they, they kind of correspond to uh, different usage scenarios. Uh, so the first, and, and kind of where we started from day one in, in Panorama, is uh, what we call the experimental data folder. Um, and so this is really uh, you know, kind of the, the data repository um, you know, in its purest form. So this is, you just have a collection of Skyline documents, maybe that's organized around uh, you know, a particular study that you're doing in the lab, um, maybe it's a particular uh, person within the lab has their own folder, but you can upload your documents you can track multiple versions of those documents. Uh, you can choose to share those uh, with collaborators. Say, I want to give them read access to this, um, or I want to give my, uh, my lab mate uh, edit capabilities to these so that they can delete uh, or replace uh, or upload a new version of those documents. Um, we also have a second, um, and I'd say this is one of our uh, if not most popular areas within Panorama, especially for brand new users. Uh, that we call a quality control folder. Uh, so what this allows us to do is to monitor instrument performance over time. So to collect longitudinal data uh, and track a variety of metrics for uh, uh, a subset of peptides or small molecules um, that uh, we know are well characterized uh, within the instrument uh, and correspond to uh, you know, a, a known QC sample, whether that's uh, you know, an IRT uh, peptide kit or, or, or similar, um, and be able to really monitor and detect outliers um, and have data automatically flow into the system uh, through auto QC or mechanisms like that. Uh, the third, which we won't really go into much detail on today just due to time constraints, uh, is to build chromatogram libraries. So like I mentioned earlier, this is kind of the MS1 uh, you know, the equivalent of a, a spectral library. Um, and so this allows us to uh, essentially create a curated set of these chromatograms um, to, you know, uh, to, to identify the uh, best representative um, expression of one of these chromatograms, and then be able to download that, use that to inform future experiments um, that might be looking for the same peptide, uh, for example, uh, and then be able to score that, uh, that future observation against that known library uh, chromatogram. 
So now we'll kind of dive a little bit deeper into um, you know, some of these different usage modes. Uh, so the experimental data folders, like I said, um, you know, this is a kind of general repository for these Skyline documents. Uh, you'll see a lot of the views within Panorama are very similar to uh, things that you're familiar with from the Skyline user interface. Um, and this is a great place to uh, securely share these documents. So instead of emailing them around, instead of having them on a network file share uh, with v1, v2, v3 appended to the, uh, the file name, uh, it's a place to really, um, and it's organized within an entire group. Um, and so this is a, a place to collaborate, um, be able to, to push and pull this data, um, and also be sure that everyone is looking at the, the latest and greatest, you know, the, the current version. Uh, of any of these documents. Um, so as I mentioned, we can uh, track these, these multiple uh, versions of the Skyline documents. Um, and so this is something that might be of interest if you're, for example, working on a method build um, and trying to figure out uh, you know, exactly what peptides, transitions, small molecules you want to be uh, targeting for, uh, for a given assay. Um, so Skyline, when it pushes that data into Panorama, will automatically establish a link between the previous version and the new version. So we have that full chain um, that we can click through. Um, we have that the, the full history so we can see what any given version looks like. Um, and we can pull that back into Skyline to work with it again. Uh, we can add notes so that we know, uh, okay, what where was I at this point in the sequence? Uh, so you can see that in, uh, in the screenshot here, um, you know, that if Fugish and I were collaborating on this method build um, that, uh, you know, might have uh, wanted to get her something, so I'll push that to her. Um, and then we can see the quick summary uh, as I'm refining um, exactly what I want to, uh, to be doing in this particular method. Uh, so kind of narrowing my precursor and transition counts until I get to my final set. Uh, so this is one of the, the brand new things that we're really excited about in, in Panorama. So uh, some of you are probably well familiar with uh, Skyline support for calibration groups uh, to do absolute quantitation. Um, and so this is an area where we got to uh, play a little catch up in, in Panorama and add that new capability. Um, so what we'll do is every time uh, we now see a Skyline document that has calibration curve data, uh, we're going to import that as we pull that document into Panorama. Um, and then you'll see a lot of the, the same types of plots um, that you get within uh, within Skyline's interface. Uh, you can see the, the curve itself here, uh, fitting the, uh, the unknowns to uh, the standard and the QC uh, samples within that curve. Um, and then we've been doing quite a bit of work recently uh, to expand on the reporting um, that's available in Panorama and, and go beyond some of the things that uh, are available directly in Skyline. Um, and so uh, while the initial rollout of that was in the 17.2 release, uh, which came out in the middle of July this year, uh, we've got some great new capabilities coming um, and a variety of other built-in reports that are coming in 17.3, uh, which will be released in the middle of November this year. Quality control folders. So like I said, these are for monitoring uh, instrument performance over time. Um, what we can do is track a variety of different metrics uh, on all of the, the peptides or small molecules that are being monitored. Um, and so yeah, retention time, peak width, peak area, um, the, the, uh, are, are just some of the um, yeah, six or eight different metrics that we have. We're always looking to be adding to the set of metrics um, so that we can um, you know, better capture and better identify um, additional types of problems. Um, so this entire effort was, was really inspired uh, by a project from uh, Michael Berriman um, called SPROCA, uh, Statistical Process Control. Um, and we've got uh, a growing range uh, of capabilities. So this is something that we added to in our, uh, I believe, 17 one release, uh, so our first release of 2017. Um, where we uh, went beyond the Levi Jennings plots that we uh, originally had, uh, which basically show um, just the, the absolute value of a given metric for a given peptide over time. Uh, so we can see in this plot we have uh, time as our x-axis uh, and our y-axis is 
uh, plotting retention time, which is what's been selected from the metric uh, list here. Uh, but now I also have the options uh, to show moving range and QSUM plots. Uh, and so those are very good for detecting uh, essentially increased variability uh, within my QC samples, um, as well as uh, you know, kind of slower trends, um, basically a, a drift up or a drift down um, that might not go outside of the, the normal range uh, for a given uh, peptide, but still uh, are, are likely signals of some sort of problem uh, building up in the instrument. Um, and one of the most powerful things that we can do here is to establish uh, the, the kind of expected bounds uh, for, for a given peptide or a given small molecule. Um, so in the screenshots here, you can see these gray shaded areas. Uh, so these are what we call guide sets. Um, but you think of them as, as kind of the, the training data uh, for, these, uh, for these assays. Um, and so what I do is I say, well, here's a period of uh, you know, relative stable performance uh, for a given uh, for a given QC sample, um, and then I, the system will take the mean and the standard deviation uh, within that range, um, and then flag anything that goes beyond three standard deviations from that range, either up or down, uh, as an outlier. Um, and you can see that more clearly in the second set here, um, where there's a slightly larger range, and Abigail will, will do a hands-on uh, demo of that a little bit later as well. So once we had all that in the quality control folders, we really wanted to go back and make it easier and more automatic to use. Um, and so that's why, uh, why in conjunction with the McCoss lab, uh, we collaborated to uh, create a tool called AutoQC. Um, so this is a, a separate utility um, that gets installed typically on the instrument computer itself, but could be anywhere that has access to uh, the, the QC sample files rolling off the instrument. Uh, and you can monitor a particular location. Um, you tell it where to expect those files to show up. Um, and point it at a specific Skyline document um, that defines all the peptides and transitions that you want to monitor uh, within your QC or your, or your system suitability. Um, and then AutoQC will automatically, running in the background, detect a newly acquired file, analyze it, and then push it into a target folder in Panorama. Uh, and so basically within a, a minute or two of having uh, that, that sample file acquired, um, it's automatically showing up as new data points within the QC folder in Panorama. We immediately know if there are any outliers with it um, and that we can uh, you know, either proceed with our regular uh, experimental assay samples uh, or we can look back and say, no, nope, we need to address those performance issues right now before we do any more um, on the instrument. We also built out QC dashboards. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, rolled out last year. Um, so the idea is that you know, if you're in a lab with multiple instruments, uh, you really want to be able to see um, how all of them are performing at once and then be able to quickly dive into any that are uh, problematic. So what we'll do within Panorama is set up a separate folder for each instrument. Um, and each one is feeding data into its own QC folder. Um, and then at these dashboard levels, we can see uh, for the different instruments. Uh, exactly when was the last time we received a document? Um, when was the last time that we know that AutoQC was running? Um, and how many outliers might there be um, for any of these different metrics? And so from there, we can very quickly drill in uh, to get the, the details for, uh, uh, for that particular instrument. Also new in the Soma Team 2 release is the ability to exclude uh, particular samples or individual metrics for particular samples in a QC file. Um, so basically, as you're accumulating all this data, maybe you've got a, a, a true outlier. Let's say that you ran out of your, uh, your QC sample, um, and so you effectively had a kind of null injection into the instrument. Um, you can now, within Panorama, just say click to exclude. It's not counted as an outlier anymore. Basically, kind of declutter that, get it out of the way when there's a known problem with the, the file. Um, and then looping back a little bit on your general capabilities um, within Panorama. Um, so you, um, like we said before, uh, you can share uh, these, uh, these documents with, with collaborators and give them access to a particular folder uh, worth of data. 
Uh, that can be in read-only mode, that can be an editor, it can be an admin, so that they'd be able to add new users or share that with others. Um, and you can also make it just generally available to the public, and Patricia will show up a great workflow um, that she's developed um, to even go beyond that um, within Panorama Public to be able to, uh, to, to easily share data uh, to support a publication. We also have a variety of tools behind the scenes to be able to, uh, to, to export all this data and leverage it in other ways that aren't built into Panorama. We certainly realize that Panorama is never going to do everything for everyone. Um, and so just like Skyline has the external tool store, um, Panorama has a lot of capabilities to be able to export and integrate other analysis. Uh, so the R programming language is one of the key areas that we work with. There's a, a package um, in CRAN called our lab key that allows you to extract data from Panorama. Um, and you can go ahead and also give Panorama an R script and say, please show the results of this script. So if you're creating uh, a custom plot, uh, you know, maybe you're doing clustering and uh, a custom heat map or similar, um, you can expose that directly in Panorama as an alternative view. Um, and the person looking at it doesn't even have to know anything about R or even that it is written in R. Um, if you have those scripts available within, within your group. Um, and then we're always building out kind of new plotting and, and charting capabilities. Sometimes those things are uh, you know, really popular view from, views from Skyline that we want to integrate into Panorama. Um, and sometimes they're, they're things that are uh, useful in Panorama because we have access to that full repository and can go across all of those different documents at once. So next steps, hopefully you're excited about Panorama um, and want to get hands-on and uh, either try the new things uh, within Panorama that I've mentioned if you're a long-time Panorama user or um, get your hands on it and just start playing with it uh, for the first time. So the easiest way, um, and Patricia will talk more about this in a moment, uh, is to get an account on Panorama Web. That's the, the server that the McCoss Lab hosts. Um, it's a place where you can use Panorama uh, either to just browse existing uh, publication results that folks have uploaded or to share your own that way. Um, and then we're, um, for, for groups that want to go beyond that, um, we also have uh, a collaboration with the McCoss Lab that we call the Panorama Partners Program. Um, so it's a great way to get direct access to uh, folks like Brandon McLean, to Vigisha, to myself, um, to be able to, to get help uh, support using Panorama, uh, to understand best practices and how to make the most of the capabilities that are there. Um, and then uh, perhaps even more exciting um, is to be able to you know, get your input uh, kind of into our feature queue um, so that we can be building it out and making it really work well for your scenarios. So with that, I will hand off to Vidisha for a little bit more hands-on demo. Uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, introductory uh, Panorama webinar. Um, so as Josh mentioned, uh, one of the ways to use Panorama is to get a project on Panorama Web. And this is the server that we maintain here um, at, in the, at the University of Washington. And on this server, we let um, researchers uh, request free projects. Uh, so, you know, this is a great way if you're in an academic lab and you don't have the resources to set up your own lab key server, then you can just get a project on Panorama Web. And we give project owners complete control over their projects. So you, as a project administrator, will be able to create a folder hierarchy that suits uh, the needs uh, for your lab. Uh, you will be able to add new users to the project and you will also be able to uh, configure permissions on individual folders however you want to. So with that let me take you to the home page of Panorama Web. So right now I'm not logged in so this is what anybody uh, coming to the Panorama Web home page will see. Uh, there are several resources here on the right uh, that will help you uh, get started with uh, using Panorama. We have uh, three tutorials that cover um, the experimental data folders and the chromatogram library folders. Um, and we also have uh, the webinars that Josh talked about. Those are also linked on this page. And in addition, we also have some example data sets that are available uh, for anyone to browse. And these are Skyline documents that we've uploaded to let users get a feel for what the documents look like once they get imported um, into Panorama. So I'm going to click on one of them. 
Um, so here I'm on the document details view and uh, I can see a summary for this document. So this tells me the number of proteins, peptides, precursors, and transitions that were me measured in this document and also how many replicates there were in the document. And below that in this grid, um, uh, it, this lists all the uh, uh, proteins and uh, peptides that were measured in this document. You can click on the proteins or the peptides to get more details. So I'm going to click on one of the proteins. Um, and now I'm on the protein uh, details page. And here I can see the sequence of the protein. And highlighted in these uh, lavender boxes are the sequences, the peptide sequences that were measured in this protein in this document. Uh, below the sequence uh, are some Swiss Pro annotations for the protein. Um, and you can, again, everything here is hyperlinked. So for example, you can click on one of the Go terms and get more details on the Gene Ontology website. Below the annotations is a list of peptides that were measured uh, in this protein. So I'm going to click on one of those peptides and see more details. Um, on the peptide details page, you can see uh, the chromatograms for this peptide from all the replicates. There were 42 replicates. And this table here uh, has a row for each of those replicates. So right now it's showing uh, the first 10 uh, of the 42. And you can page through and see all of them. Uh, the first column in this table has the total precursor ion chromatogram. And what follows are the fragment ion chromatograms. So if you had a light and heavy uh, precursor for this peptide, they'd show up side by side. In this case, there's just one. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom of the chromatograms box and see what else is there. Uh, and under the chromatograms are these summary charts. And these must be pretty familiar to uh, Skyline users. Uh, there's a peak areas chart and a retention times chart. And these are the replicate comparison charts that you're familiar with in Skyline. Um, so the one here is showing the peak areas for this peptide and all the 42 replicates. And this one is showing the retention times. So the researcher that created this document added several uh, annotations at the replicate level. And just like you can in Skyline, you can group these charts um, based on these annotations. So I'm going to group them by the condition annotation and click Update. And now I can see the average peak areas for this peptide in the two conditions, the disease and the healthy. So below the summary charts is a annotated MSMS spectrum. If your document is associated with the spectrum library and there's a matching spectrum in that library for the peptide that you're looking at, then you will see this interactive um, spectrum viewer in which you can zoom in, zoom out. And then you can also select which uh, fragment ions you want to show or hide. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my uh, document details page. And I can, of course, use my browser's back button uh, to go there. But I can also scroll all the way to the top uh, of the page. And there I see the name of the file right above the peptide sequence. And I can click on that um, file name and go back to the document details page. Uh, there are, there's one thing I want to highlight here is that uh, all these columns are filterable and uh, sortable. So you can click on a column and uh, see what controls are available. And I'm now going to apply a filter on the description column. So I select filter. And uh, in this dialog, the choose values tab is actually listing all the um, description values that are available in the document. Uh, and I can select the ones that I want to filter for. But I, what I'm going to do is click on this choose filters tab and then uh, tell Panorama that to only show me um, proteins that where the description contains haptoglobin. So now my grid is filtered to the single protein that uh, match my filter. And I'm going to click on one of these peptides again. Um, so one thing about the chromatograms that you're seeing here is that you, you can filter, apply a filter here as well. So if you expand this display chart settings, um, then you can, uh, you know, if you just want to see uh, chromatograms from certain replicates, then you can select the name of that replicate um, from this uh, drop-down combo box. And this is a multiple select combo box, so you can click on multiple things. And if you click on them again, it gets deselected. Uh, and you can also filter uh, the chromatograms based on the annotation value. So let's say I just wanted to see chromatograms from um, the healthy uh, replicate. So I'm going to select condition healthy from this drop-down menu and click Update. And now I see that I'm only seeing um, 21 um, chromatograms from 21 replicates, which were annotated as being healthy. 
I'm going to go back to my uh, document details page. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, uh, there are several views in Panorama that Skyline users are familiar with. So once your document is in Panorama, uh, you know, you can get a lot of information about that document just by viewing it within Panorama. But you could also download uh, the original document that was uploaded, and you can do that by clicking on this uh, download file link next to the file name in the document summary box. And uh, this will download the original uh, sky.zip file and um, Skyline recognize this as being a valid Skyline zip archive and you'll be able to open uh, the original document in Skyline and view it there. So this is a great way of, uh, as Josh mentioned, uh, of you know putting your documents up on Panorama and sharing them with your collaborators so you don't have to email them back and forth or put them on an FTP server or Dropbox. Your, your collaborators can actually get a lot of information by looking at the document within Panorama and if they want, they can download the original Skyline document as well. So I'm going to go back to the Panorama web homepage, and uh, here um, under, in this dark blue border, there's a link to uh, sign up to request a project on uh, Panorama web, and when you click on this link, you have to fill out a form where you enter your name, uh, the name of the institute or the company uh, for which you're requesting a project, and your email address, and when you submit this form, um, Nat Brace in the Macos lab will get back to you to confirm your request. He will set you up with an account and create a project for you and make you the administrator of the project. So um, next I'm going to show you some of the basic things that you will need to know to start us using a project on Panorama Web or any other LabKey server. And my apologies to folks in the audience who already know all this, but this is an introductory webinar. Um, so uh, for the demo, I had Nat create um, an account for me on the server and a project. So I'm going to sign in um, with my account. Um, and then in the email that Nat will send, send out to you when he creates a new project for you, it will contain a URL. Uh, link to your project and you can click on that and start using your project but you can also navigate to your project if you're on the Panorama web homepage by clicking on this um, projects tab in the top right corner and this lists all the projects to which you have read access and the project that Nat created for me is called a uh, webinar demo so I'm going to click on that um, project name and go to the home page of my project and this is what your project home page will look like uh, when you get a new project uh, in this wiki page here we have uh, links to several uh, documentation pages that will help you get started so you know things like creating a folder in Panorama importing data into Panorama and adding users to the project etc and all of these, these links are also available on the home page of Panorama web but we've added them here for your convenience so the first thing you need to do when you get a new project is uh, is to create subfolders um, in that project. Uh, and I'm not going to go through the steps of creating a subfolder that's documented um, over here. Just want to point out a couple of things that when you create a new folder in which you're planning to upload uh, Skyline documents, make sure that you have Panorama selected as a folder type and this will ensure that all the functionality of the Panorama module becomes available in that folder. And the second thing you'll have to decide is what kind of folder you want, whether you want an experimental data folder, a chromatogram library folder, or um, a QC folder. So for this demo, I'm going to be focused on uh, experimental data folder, and that's the folder type that I've created. Um, and anyone who's using uh, Panorama needs to become familiar with the uh, folder navigation menus in Panorama. And there are two elements to this, to these menus. Uh, they're accessible from um, just under the Panorama uh, logo. Uh, the first one, uh, the folder icon, um, when you hover over it, you see the project navigation menu. And this lists all the projects to which you have read-only access. Uh, you can click on the name of a project and go to the home page of the project. Uh, the project that you're currently in is displayed in this bold italicized font. Uh, next to the folder icon is the name of the project and if you hover over it you see a tree view of all the subfolders in that project. So as you can see I've already created uh, one folder here and this is an experimental data folder. So I'm going to click on that and go to the home page. Um, oh, and if you if you want to create more folders then, and you're the administrator of that folder, then you can do that by clicking on this uh, new subfolder icon at the bottom of the folder navigation menu. 
So right, uh, this is a new folder that I created for this demo. Uh, there are two boxes here. There's a mass spec search box. You can type in your protein or peptide sequence, uh, and it'll search uh, all the Skyline documents um, uploaded, uploaded to this folder for matching results. And below that, in the targeted MS runs box, uh, this table will contain a list of all the Skyline documents um, that were uploaded to this folder. So right now, there's nothing. So I'm going to um, upload something to this folder. I'm going to switch to Skyline. Now, there, there are a few different ways of getting your data into Skyline, but the, the easiest way is by using, um, uh, sorry, to get your data into Panorama, but the easiest way is to just use Skyline. Uh, and there's this uh, upload, Publish to Panorama button in the toolbar, and when you click that, if this is the first time that you're uploading a document to any Panorama server, then Skyline will say, hey, this instance of Skyline hasn't been configured to uh, talk to any Panorama server, so what do you want to do? So if you click on this uh, register button, this will take you to the form I showed where you um, request a new project on Panorama web. But since I already have a project, I'm going to click on the continue button. And in the edit server dialog, the URL of the server is already entered. By default, it's Panorama web and I'm going to enter my email address and password. And now Skyline is communicating with Panorama and getting a list of all the folders that I have access to on the server. And here I can see my webinar demo project and the folder that I created um, to upload uh, documents to. And you will notice that this folder has this uh, flask icon next to it, and that's because this folder was created as a panorama type folder, whereas the top level project folder, the webinar demo folder, um, doesn't have that icon. Uh, and you can only upload Skyline documents um, to a folder that has this kind of an icon, or that is a panorama folder. So I'm, I'm going to select that folder and click OK. And now Skyline is creating an archive of all the files required for this document and uh, uploading them to Panorama. And um, once that is done, it asks me, well, published succeeded. Would you like to view the file in Panorama? So I'm going to click on the Yes button. And uh, this takes me to the document details page that I showed you for the um, example file. Uh, so you have the document summary uh, box, and you have the table with all the peptides and proteins, and you can click on them uh, and look at the chromatograms. Um, so I'm going to go back to the home page of my folder. And you can always go back to the home page of the folder by clicking on the name of the folder right under the navigation menus. And now on the home page, I see that there is one file in my targeted MS runs box. And there's a download link here as well. So uh, you can download the original file and open it up uh, in Skyline. So the next thing I might want to do uh, is to share this um, folder with uh, other users in my lab. And I can do that since, since I am the administrator of this project and of this folder. I have the ability to configure the permissions. And I can do that from this admin menu in the top right. So from the admin menu, I'll select folder and permissions. And um, I think, so first thing, uh, when you create a new folder, it inherits the permissions from its parents fo parent folder. So first thing you want to do is to uncheck this box, make sure this is unchecked. Um, and then there are several uh, levels of permissions that you can add. It looks like I'd already added uh, Brendan, um, given Brendan, Brendan Reader only role when I was practicing for the webinar, but I just removed him and add him back again. Uh, so you can give people uh, read-only permissions, or if you want them to be able to uh, upload documents uh, to this folder, you can make them the editor. Uh, and if you want them to be able to uh, do everything that you can do, like create uh, subfolders, uh, set up permissions, and all of that, then you can make them the folder administrator. So I'm going to give um, Brendan read-only permissions and click Save. Um, and in, the, in addition to giving individual users, you can uh, create permission groups. And you can do that by uh, clicking on this Project Groups tab. Uh, and I'm not going to do that uh, right now. Um, there is a documentation that I'll point to that will help you uh, do that. But one thing I want to show here is that you can also make your folder completely public. So if you wanted anybody who had the link to this project, to this folder, to be able to view the contents of this folder, then you can assign 
site guests, uh, the special group called site guests, um, to the reader role. And when you do that, anybody who has a link uh, to this folder um, can view um, data in this folder. Um, all right, so the next thing I want to go over is um, Panorama Public. So like I showed you, if you're the administrator of a project uh, and a folder in Panorama Web, it is very easy for you to configure permissions uh, on that folder. Um, and researchers in the past uh, used this flexibility to put their Skyline documents associated with, uh, you know, um, published manuscripts. Um, so what they would do is initially make the folder accessible to reviewers and once their uh, paper got published then they would uh, make the folder public. Um, and they would put a link to that folder in their paper so anybody reading their paper could click on that link and view the data uh, in Panorama Web. So that was great but we wanted to have a centralized location for all published data um, on Panorama Web. So we started this repository called uh, Panorama Public uh, and if your data is already in a project on Panorama Web then it can very easily be um, copied to Panorama Public. And if this data is associated with a manuscript that's currently under review, we will make your, we'll keep your data private and provide you with a reviewer account. And uh, once your paper is published, you just let us know and we will make um, that data public. Um, and uh, the authors or people who submit data to Panorama Public have read-only access to that data on Panorama Public. And this is uh, good from the journal's point of view uh, because this ensures that, uh, you know, the chances of the authors accidentally modifying or deleting stuff um, after the paper has been published, um, you know, that, that cannot happen if they have read-only access. Whereas in their own projects, they have full control, you know, so they can do anything and might accidentally uh, change things after the paper is being published. And then recently, uh, MCP came out with uh, guidelines for what information needs to be submitted for our targeted mass spectrometry quantitative experiments. And they require you to provide all chromatograms along with the peak integration boundaries. And this becomes very easy with Skyline and Panorama because you can already see this information for um, documents in Skyline. And you can also do that. You can also see the chromatograms and the integration boundaries um, in Panorama as well. So I'm going to go through the steps to uh, get your data into um, Panorama Public. But first, let me show you how to go to that repository. So I'm going to go back to the home page of Panorama Web. And here you see this uh, blue button that says Panorama Public. If you click on this, uh, you will see a list of uh, the currently uh, publicly available um, experiments. You can uh, click on them and view more details. So I'm going to just explore uh, one of these experiments here. Um, so in addition to the metadata that the users have provided, uh, you also can see the Skyline document that they uploaded uh, for this experiment. And you can um, you know, explore it just the way you would explore data in your own folder. So you can go ahead and see the chromatograms and the integration boundaries. Um, and the other thing I want to point out is that the users, uh, the authors that submitted this data made good use of wiki pages. And I didn't have time, I uh, don't have time to go over wiki pages today, but they're a great way of uh, providing uh, uh, additional content that's relevant to your experiment. Um, you can provide this information via wiki pages in the same folder as as in which you have your Skyline documents. And in this case, uh, the users have uh, added a couple of figures from the table. So wiki pages are a great way of uh, you know, providing uh, additional context uh, around your data. So next, I'm going to publish um, my folder that I created to uh, Panorama Public. So from the home page of Panorama Web, click on the Projects tab and go to the home page of my folder and then navigate to um, the folder that I want to publish. Um, so one thing about a uh, folder homepage is that it's, 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 it's special in that uh, these boxes that you see here, the mass spec search box and the targeted MS runs box, these are called web parts. And in a folder homepage, uh, you can move them around and uh, display the ones that you want and hide the ones that you don't want. So for example, I can remove this uh, mass spec search box from the page. And this is different from, for example, the document details uh, view where, uh, you know, these 
So again, these are web parts, but they, you don't see that little triangle next to the uh, name of the web part uh, to access uh, the control menu. So this is kind of static, but the folder homepage is special in that you can customize it. So um, to publish this uh, to Panorama Public, I need to add a web part, and the list of available web parts can be uh, accessed from the select uh, web part drop-down menu. And the web part that I need to add is called Targeted MS Experiment. And I'm going to click on this link to create a new experiment. Provide a title, maybe the organism and the instrument that I used. Your abstract will hopefully be a lot longer than this. You can also provide a description of the experiment, a description of the sample, and the citation and publication link. Uh, this is probably information that you will not have if you're just submitting your manuscript for review. But once your paper is accepted, you can uh, contact us, and we will help you get this information in Panorama Public. So I'm going to click on Submit. And this takes me to the experiment details view, where I can review what I entered, um, make any changes if I want to. So again, I'm not on my folder homepage because I don't see those little triangles next to the web part title. So let me go back to my folder homepage and see what that looks like. So here I see my targeted MS uh, experiment web part. Uh, the first thing I want to do is move it to the top so that all the information about my experiment is the first thing people see when they um, view my data. And then uh, you can also add other web parts. So if, let's say if you wanted to add a wiki, you could, again, um, select the wiki web part from the menu here. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, now it looks like I'm ready to publish this to Panorama Public, so I'm going to click on this Publish button. And this takes me to a form where basically the only thing I have to do is to create a permanent link for my data on uh, Panorama Public. Um, and this is the link that you will be putting in your in your paper. And um, this is the link that people will click on. And once your data is in Panorama Public, they'll be able to view it there. So the initial part of this uh, link remains constant, but you can choose what comes after that. By default, some alphanumeric uh, characters are entered there. So I'm going to enter something here. Um, and you can enter pretty much whatever you want. The only restriction is that it has to be unique on the server. So if somebody else has used um, the webinar demo link, then when I click on this Publish button, I will see an error saying, hey, choose something else. So let me see. Click on Publish, and it looks like nobody else had used that, so um, it's available. Um, so now what this did once I clicked on that Publish button is that it triggered an email to the Panorama Web Administrator that a data has been made available for copying to Panorama Public. Um, and then in my um, experimental details uh, page, I see this copy pending message uh, that the experiment has not yet been copied. And all this is saying is that, um, you know, be careful um, uh, because any changes you make to this experiment, so basically whatever your folder looks like at the time we make the copy is what it will look like on Panorama Public. And between the time you click the Publish button and we receive your email and get back to you, it can be a day or two before, before uh, we copy your folder to Panorama Public. So be careful about um, any changes that you um, make in this folder. And then you can uh, copy this. Um, the link that you created, and you can put it in your um, paper. Um, and once your data gets copied in this publication activity table, there is this uh, copied column. Uh, and once the data gets copied, you will see a date here. Um, OK, so I think that's all I have uh, time for today. Um, you know, so this is what my folder looks like right now um, in my own project. Once it gets copied, this is exactly what it's going to look like um, on Panorama Public. Um, all right, with that, um, that's it from me, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Vidisha. If anyone does have any questions, um, as I mentioned, go ahead and submit those in the question panel, and I'll make sure that, that those get to the right presenter to be asked. Give everyone just a couple minutes for that.
So I guess while I'm waiting for questions, I could also, you know, show an example project, maybe sh uh, show users the uh, Macaws Labs uh, project and how we, ha we have organized our data. So um, this is the home page and we have created a folder for um, every user in our lab. We also have a QC folder where we put all our QC data. And under the QC folder, we have a subfolder for each of the instruments. And um, so that's how we organize our data. And I can show you what Brennan's folder looks like. So Brennan has a dedicated folder for our manuscripts. And um, I know that this one has already been published. So if I click on this, um, again, Brennan has also made good use of uh, wiki pages to provide additional context around his data. And uh, this is the link that he created for his data. So I'm going to just uh, click on this and open it in a new tab. And uh, you know, you can see. So this is on Panorama Public, and it looks exactly like uh, what Brennan's uh, folder looks like, with the exception that Brennan has this link here. Uh, and right now it's saying republish. So for example, if you submit uh, data to Panorama Public for the first time, and you send your paper for review, and the reviewers come back with some comments, and you have to make some changes, uh, you know, then you can make the changes in your own folder. And when you're ready, you just click on this republish button. And this will, again, trigger an email. And one of the Panorama web administrators will get back to you and uh, make a fresh copy of your uh, data onto um, Panorama Public. And your access URL remains the same. It doesn't change during this process. Great. All right, we do have a couple of questions that have come through. And forgive me, I might screw this first one up. Um, first question is, does Panorama currently support PECAN, P-E-C-A-N, or encyclopedia outputs and automated quantitation? Um, so, right, so um, I think Brendan might be able to better uh, answer this question. Uh, I mean, uh, so Panorama is going to import whatever information is available in your Skyline document, uh, but I don't think we have any specific support for Pecan or Encyclopedia, but I see that Brendan is here, so he may be able to better answer this. Yeah, well, I, it, it has to be in a, it has to be in a Skyline document. So we, you know, in our own lab, we do import Pecan and Encyclopedia results into Skyline documents, and then those could be uploaded to Panorama, but uh, not just sort of made the, those results cannot just be natively imported into Panorama. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, we have another question. How can we get a Default view of QC plots if you log into Panorama. Define a default view or plot. Yeah, I can take a uh, take a stab at that one. Um, so the way that the uh, the QC plot display works right now is that uh, the first time you'll you'll log in, I think we show uh, retention time and uh, you know, all the different peptides as separate. Uh, series and I believe we'll only show the Levi Jennings plot uh, if you've never come to a QC folder uh, as a particular user before. Um, what we will do uh, at the moment is remember whatever configuration you were looking at last time in a given folder. Um, so if Agisho were to change to uh, yeah, peak area, let's say, um, and uh, enable the moving range plot and check to say show all series in a single plot. Um, what we'll do is, uh, you know, if you were to uh, log out and, and log back in, come back to this page, uh, it will remember what she was looking at last time. Now, what we haven't yet done, um, but I've been talking with some of the uh, Panorama Partners program members that I mentioned before, um, is be able to essentially save uh, a given configuration, you know, either as a default or as a uh, kind of named view. Uh, so be able to uh, you know, essentially recall these, these different uh, you know, settings uh, kind of more explicitly instead of just remembering what you were looking at last time. Uh, so I'm not sure if there's a way to do exactly what you're asking right now, uh, but it is kind of on our radar of, of requests. Um, and uh, the current behavior is that we'll just show whatever the user saw last time uh, they, they were logged in. 
All right, thanks, Josh. Okay, we have another question. When a filter is applied on a project homepage and, and a peptide is selected from the result of the filter, can the peptide information that is shown be limited to that for the peptide selected? In the demo, after applying a filter and selecting a peptide from the sole result, I noticed it still showed 42 peptides found in the original project. All 42 peptides found in the original project. Uh, so, let's see, let me go back to the thing I was looking at. So here I'd applied a filter on the description. Um, Oh, are you saying, uh, does the document summary change? Uh, and no, it doesn't. The document uh, summary doesn't doesn't change. That still shows you um, everything that was available in that document. The, I hope that answers the question. The other thing that, uh, that might be relevant for that, Vinisha, is if you, if you were to apply a peptide filter here, so let's say um, a peptide neutral mass or something like that, uh, to say, um, you know, over some, some threshold, um, and then go ahead and click to view the protein. Um, I think that uh, at the moment we do not carry that peptide filter over, um, and no, uh, when you look at, at the sequence view, um, and so uh, I guess I'm not, uh, not sure which of these had multiple, I wasn't paying quite close enough attention to, but I think it's, it's essentially your filtering in the context of this one uh, view not uh, in, in other ones that you might link to from here. Right, yep. So the filter you're applying is just to this grid and uh, not anything else. All right, great. Uh, we have another question. So is Panorama dependent on public funding? Is there a backup plan to maintain Panorama? Should public funding be discontinued? The same question also applies for Skyline. Uh, I guess I'll take that one. Um, yeah, I mean, Sky, Skyline definitely uses uh, public funding. Uh, Panorama also, uh, one of the Panorama partners is, is the National Cancer Institute. Um, and yeah, we've just gotten, we've just been added to uh, proteomics data commons uh, grant which should bring more public funding to the grant. It's not complete, you know, it's not completely dependent. Uh, we obviously have the Panorama partners, which are now uh, also include four pharma companies. Uh, Skyline itself is supported by all of the six major instrument vendors. So, you know, we do have revenue. Um, other than that, I, you know, and I, I would have to say, I was a founder of LabKey. <laughs> And when I came to the Macross lab, uh, Mike said, oh, we have two years of funding. And that sounded great to me because, you know, often companies uh, that may not be sort of publicly funded with the same kinds of grants that we're, we're funded with in the Macross lab uh, don't necessarily have that much, uh, you know, don't have assets to last them for two or five years. Um, and so, you know, where they have uh, not public investment from from uh, other private investors. So there's no guarantee that any project can go on forever, but certainly I would say Panorama, LabKey Server, and Skyline all nearing, well, I mean, LabKey Server now has been going about 15 years and and Skyline's been going about nine, and they both look incredibly stable to me uh, in comparison to our early days. So I'd say things look pretty good, but yes, we do, but our funding does include uh, public grant funding. Thanks, Brendan. Another question on QC samples. So for QC samples, the retention times, et cetera, will depend on the column used. How do you, in the Macos lab, deal with QCs from the same instrument but from different columns? That's a great question. I'll, I'll talk um, you know, kind of generally at, to some of the features that are available uh, to help with that. Um, and then, you know, Bikisha or Brendan, if you'd like to jump in with any specifics for how the Macos lab is set up. Um, so within AutoQC, uh, one of the capabilities that was added uh, after its initial release was uh, to be able to have multiple configurations um, within a single AutoQC setup. 
Um, and so if there are different sets of, uh, you know, kind of overall instrumentation, not just mass spec, but the column and, uh, and, and other factors as well, what you can do is set up AutoQC to load those into separate uh, QC folders. Um, and so I know that they're making uh, use of that for kind of different projects within the lab to kind of segment out um, those uh, different slices of the data. Um, so I think that's probably what, what I would recommend in terms of, uh, you know, kind of the, the feature set uh, to help keep those distinct uh, across the different column types. Um, but, you know, Brendan or Rudy should be able to speak more directly to exactly how the McCoss lab has set things up. Um, so yeah, we definitely create separate folders if we have, uh, if the column length is different or even if we are monitoring a slightly different set of uh, peptides. Um, uh, so we do use uh, AutoQC loader and the multiple configurations within AutoQC loader and import that data into separate uh, QC folders. All right, great. Thanks, you both. All right, we'll give everyone just one more minute to add any last questions if you have them. All right, it looks like that wraps it up. Oh, no, nope, we've got one more. All right, the last question we have is, does Panorama satisfy criteria for the MCP publishing of TMT data? Brendan, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think so. TMT data is, is not a, so at heart, uh, both Skyline and Panorama are chromatography-based quantification methods, and uh, TMT is a spectrum-based quantification method. So unless you were doing uh, TMT via PRM, uh, no, it wouldn't. And, and I, I haven't even, I have to admit, I haven't even read uh, the, the TMT requirements for MCP. So. Um, all I can speak to is the is the new MCP requirements for targeted uh, proteomics and and those panorama and skyline both meet very well. All right, great. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Just a little reminder: this webinar was recorded, and um, we'll make that available um, in the next day or so. Um, we'll just distribute it to everyone who attended and as well as posting it um, on the web. So thank you again for your time. We appreciate you joining us. Um, feel free to reach out to myself or any of the other organizers on uh, this webinar if you have any follow-up questions. And have a great rest of your day.